what's up guys I'm very happy to present you this new topic refrigerants and probably you're asking yourself why do we need to study this and this is because a refrigerant it's almost also a pure substance of course there are many other refrigerants in which there are mixture of substances but many times the refrigerants are also pure substances and as with water let's make this analogy water will be used for power generation which will be studied in TD I don't remember six I think and refrigerants are used for heat pumps and of course refrigerant this is TD7 so since we are studying water then makes a lot of sense to study refrigerants and yes let's do it what's a refrigerant a little bit on theory well it's a substance used in refrigeration I know it does not uh, makes you clearer, but let's do it slowly. Uh, these are working fluids. What do I mean with working fluid? It's essentially that these machines are going to be working with these fluids. You're going to pressurize them, you're going to heat them, boil them, condense them, etc. And very important, I really think this is, I believe this is important to learn. They have very convenient properties for this given task. When I mean given task, are those I told you before on the working fluid. They have high latent heats, which mean that they can hold a lot of enthalpy or they need a lot of enthalpy changes in order to increase one Celsius and increase or change phase from liquid to vapor and so on. They have low condensation points, which is good. You don't need to be operating in minus 50 Celsius. You may be working, I don't know, maybe in 20 Celsius, which is pretty normal and it's safe to operate it's chemically inert at the best case it will not get oxidized and will not explode so there are of course refrigerants available at domestic level houses etc which will be in your ac air conditioner in the auto or in your house and there are also industrial ones which are of course a little bit better more sophisticated but they are a little bit more, let's say, toxic or not that convenient to use. We will be analyzing a lot of them, but especially I want you to start getting familiar with this refrigerant 134A or refrigerant 134. You will learn later the what does that mean essentially. But for now, just know that this is a very common household refrigerant as well. The good thing is that we do have also data we have tables but what i wanted to show you right now are you have also graphs or diagrams which are very useful and these are given by the supplier the one the guy that sold it to you or you may find it in even internet databases and as with water they have a lot of uh let's say data that can be extracted from the diagrams for example saturation points temperature versus pressure, equilibriums, enthalpy, which will be used for heat requirements and work needed to do the task, entropy, which right now is not a concern, but in the second law of thermodynamics, you will love that, and specific volumes, which is very important, especially when dealing with how much quantities do you want given a specific volume. Once again, I told you this is for refrigeration and heat pumps, which is the block thermodynamics number seven. So this is a little intro to that refrigerants. You better get along with that because it's very, very useful. And this is a diagram of a refrigerant and I'm going to explain it, how to read it in the next series of videos. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, 
experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher and the engineer get the best of each other. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.